I think that entrepreneurial spirit's in you from the start. I found a little notebook I had from 12 to 13 years old and I'd spent a summer making sandwiches and cakes and taking them around to the sort of factories where Dad worked in, in Box Hill and, and selling them and tallying up my profits. So I must have, you know, it was in me from a very young age. It was more than the money, it was also creating something and having people enjoy it and that's quite rewarding. Mama? Yeah? My family, my children are the reason. It's the reason you do. You're in business. It's the reason I'm working um, and looking after them and providing to, for them. I guess being an interesting person for them. Because um, all I think being a good parent is also about having a, being pleased with your own life and what you're doing in it. I remember someone asked me about a year ago, "How do you do it?" Um, and I started to give some answer and I said, well, what about you? Do you have children? She said, yeah, I, I do. And they're in daycare from sort of eight in the morning till six at night. And I was like, oh, I'll never answer a question again like what I'm doing is difficult because, you know, the beauty of having your own business whilst you're sort of thinking about it all the time and, you, and sometimes it's difficult to switch off. I've just got so much flexibility that a lot of people do not have. So I'm just really blessed. Hey, out of the shop, close the bag, out of the shop. The story of Keep Cup is, begins with the story of Blue Bag. I was like, oh, well, you know, I love cooking, you know, can't be that hard. So off we went and we opened Blue Bag and we worked in that for 12 years. From that we got the idea for Keep Cup. So it was seeing the volume of packaging waste that came through our business, watching people come in with their ceramic mug, feeling very virtuous and seeing the barista roll their eyes. that They, it, they couldn't make a good coffee in it, that we decided to do our own. What I found really interesting about Keep Cup is that we pitch right to the middle of the market. We didn't pitch to the deep greens because they don't use disposable cups. So it's, it's really smack bang in the middle of, I guess, people who don't identify themselves as green. And I think people are intimidated because they think in order to do the right thing, you have to be doing everything right. And once again, it's about the journey. It's about you picking off things that you can do to do better and just working away at it. You don't need to get it right first time. I think that's why people have responded really well to Keep Cup because it's just a small thing and we never, we never like negative imagery, like we don't want it to be guilt driven, we want it to be a positive thing that people do because that's really empowering whereas guilt stuff doesn't work long term. Jamie and I, we're 18 months apart and I'm the eldest and we've been in business together now for must be 14 years. And we've had some massive ding-dongs. We've sort of not spoken to each other for months at a stretch and all that sort of thing. We like to yell at each other in the office, which people find distressing, but they get used to it. Like we're sort of family who gets it all out and then we, we move on. Sometimes it takes a little longer to move on than others. Um, yeah, so that's, that's worked really well. The story that I think sums us up a bit is that when we were really little, mum used to have, she'd have a dinner party and she'd give us a little pack of, say, you know, 10 chips and a little mini Chiquito bar. And I would just wolf into mine, eat it straight away. And then I'd go, have you eaten yours? And Jamie would like pretend to eat it. And then like 10 minutes later, he'd just pull it out and go, I've still got mine. And I'd be furious and I'd leap over and there'd be sort of, <laughs> mum would have to come in and pull us apart. <laughs> but probably sums up our natures quite a bit. So when, when it works well, it works really well because he's quite detail oriented um, building systems and I'm more sort of shoot from the hip. And now we're sort of in a patch where it's working really well. The way we got the idea off the ground is we did do a bit of product testing because we sold soup in our shops and we did find some nice decor soup mugs and we sold them and then gave a 50 cent uh, discount on refill and we found that 15% of our customers used these soup mugs so we knew there was a market and we knew that if this worked it would be a global product so that was part of the dream of it. But really in the end it's still a leap of faith to say I'm, I'm going to do this, this is important to me and I think I can sell it, I think I can make it work and I sort of tell the story about my daughter having her sippy cup with the hot milk in it and I thought well imagine if I gave her that in a paper cup, I just wouldn't and no other people would think like me, so how come it's okay for me to have a paper cup twice a day? So it was that sort of logic that sort of said other people must be thinking the same thing. And then when we launched the product in June 2009, we were at this market and I did not lift my head off the, um, 
bench for six hours, we sold a thousand cups and people were saying, this was my idea, like I've been thinking about this and so it was just, it was a lovely moment because it was, we had sort of hit on something that people were thinking about. And I, like, and I, what I was really shocked at was it, it ranged from people in their 20s to people right up until their 60s. And it made me think like there were a few w women came on the stand who looked like they worked and I thought they've probably seen the rise and rise of the disposable cup because they only, they're only, I don't know, 15 years old disposable cups in the coffee industry. So they would have seen that happen and thought this is so wasteful for very little value. I think success is something that you, it's not a, a static place like all the Zen masters say it's all about the journey. This business we've now paid off all our debts and we're in a really fortunate position where the road's wide open in front of us and we can make of it what, what we will. What, um, so that's really exciting. Um, I guess the only thing we can do is muck it up now. <laughs> But when I think about success, I heard this interview, I don't know much about Lady Gaga, but there was an interview between her and Stephen Fry, and she was talking about one of her songs, and she said um, that people should reinvent themselves and continue reinventing until they become champions in their own life. And I thought that was just so lovely, just that sense that you're in the right place, doing the right thing, and you feel really good about yourself, and you have to just keep you have to keep working at that, that's a constant thing to do. Where Keep Cup will do well is when there's a, people are in, feel empowered about sustainability and that they can do something where there's a really strong design community and where there's a strong coffee culture. So Melbourne is the perfect place to launch the Keep Cup. And also what we didn't realise is I think when we started we were sort of like, well do we say we're from Melbourne or Australia or do we just sort of be an international brand and it's turned out saying we're from Australia, big ticks from everyone around the world saying we're from Melbourne, even bigger ticks in the coffee community because people know that that great coffee and that third wave culture is, you know, Melbourne's a big part of that. At the end of the day, what excites most people here is the behaviour change aspect of the product. I mean the product's great and the colours are great but it's when you get people actually changing their behaviour and encouraging others to do so that it becomes really exciting. So that's, that's what we're that's what we're doing. <laughs>